Work has always played a large role in defining who we are as humans, but there are times in which we strive to be as productive as possible. Productivity is not only sought after out of financial necessity, but also because it gives us a sense of purpose and helps us shape our identity. Work has been proven to be beneficial to increasing our motivation and overall mental health. But when we become so entrenched in our work, it can be difficult to turn this part of our identity off. This is especially the case because our society values productivity and has made paid work a necessity. These pressures can lead to workaholism. Workaholism, or work addiction, is a clinical condition where a person develops an obsessive and compulsive interest in work. Research shows that workaholism is a growing problem in industrialized countries where work performance is a measure of success. According to a recent study, work addiction is linked to poorer mental health. Furthermore, researchers have found that workaholism can be dangerous and even deadly. What may start as being busy with work all the time can progress to a loss of productivity and failed relationships. This can lead to workers being hospitalized from severe stress, which can eventually lead to death. There are a number of signs that can indicate that you're becoming more of a workaholic. For example, if you strive to free up more time to work or spend more time working than the job requires, then you could be considered a workaholic. Some workaholics work more because it's their coping mechanism against depression and anxiety. Workaholism is believed to be linked to certain types of personalities, like being a perfectionist, being competitive, or being achievement-oriented. These people work excessively despite the harmful effects on their personal health and well-being. People at risk of developing work addiction often have obsessive compulsive thoughts and low self-esteem, which leads them to constantly doubt their own work performance. They devalue their own time and neglect their own hobbies for the sake of working more. Poor quality of sleep, high levels of stress, and depression are also identified as high-risk factors for developing work addiction. On the other hand, some people work more than they're required because of financial needs. So, how can a workaholic detach psychologically from work? On a larger scale, we need to stop viewing work as a tool to measure performance, success, and growth. As for the office environment, employers need to value their workers' demands, health, and well-being. They can do so by increasing job security and opportunities for personal growth. They can also reduce working hours in order to give their employees a chance to spend meaningful time with their families and loved ones. Overall, these strategies can actually result in a higher quality of work from employees. If you're concerned that you have or are developing work addiction, address the problem now if possible. Seek support in your workplace, speak to a mental health therapist, or reach out to your friends and family. Practice setting boundaries while taking some time off, and if you find that your work-related identity occupies a central place in how you view yourself, Adopt new, fun hobbies that aren't related to your profession. One way to test yourself is to examine how you feel if you were to completely unplug for a while and take a break from work. Does that thought make you anxious? If so, you may want to consider speaking to a professional for a more thorough examination into your relationship with work. What do you do for work, and how do you unplug from work when it's time to relax? Share your thoughts in the comment section.